Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here, and this is the week of CES 2018. We out here. It is raining. Uh, if you've never been to CES, it's definitely a lot. There is tech everywhere, people everywhere, and just overall a lot going on here in Las Vegas. But among all that stuff, there is some dope tech buried in there, and that's kind of just been my mission this week to find it. So one of the most buzzworthy news-making things we've seen this year at CES is Razer Project Linda. And Razer, they tend to get all kinds of attention at CES for something they're showing every year. This year it's this. Uh, it's a concept laptop that uses the Razer phone as a brain slash trackpad. So this actually isn't a totally new idea. Like we've seen smartphone convertibles into laptops before. It's just never really been wildly successful. Razer hopes to do it best though, of course, because of the Razer phone's prowess. It's already an awesome phone with great speakers, so it doesn't have to have extra speakers in the laptop, things like that. It doesn't need a processor or RAM, it's just using the Razer phone. In fact, the only hardware actually in this Linda laptop are the RGB keyboard, because of course, uh, the battery, a webcam up top, and a couple ports, the headphone jack, USB-C for charging, and full-size USB-A on the other side for adding accessories like a mouse. Other than that, it just pops the Razer phone in and out with a single button. It sits flush, it has the matching color with the Razer Blade Stealth laptop, it has this little notch cut out at the front that uses the fingerprint reader and the power button from the phone. Uh, I think the design is actually pretty well thought out. It's just debatable if this is actually a practical product or not at all. Now for Linda, there is no price range or release date yet. It's a pretty common trend for stuff we see at CES. Um, but I, I do really like the design. I think it's really interesting. It's just weird to build an entire accessory like that all around a smartphone that's probably gonna be updated in a year. Like in nine, 10 months when we see Razer Phone 2, is this whole laptop people just bought for their phone not gonna work? Is compatibility gonna work? Do the dimensions stay the same? That kind of thing. That's tough. I'll keep an eye on that one. Now I also made it to Sennheiser's booth and they were showing exactly one thing that I was super interested in and it's the whole reason I went, which is Sennheiser HD 820. So I just showed like the custom HD 800s I've been using for a while by Sennheiser in my last video, the setup tour, but these will allegedly take that to a new level by isolating sound with the glass over the back of the ear cups. You can see it, it's this concave gorilla glass. So basically they retain a lot of the characteristics of open back headphones like the HD 800s, the big drivers, the open nature of it, the wide soundstage, but it now seals you off from the noise on the outside of your environment for people who don't want to hear all that. So this I am definitely interested in. I was able to listen to them for a bit, I can confirm they sounded incredible, but yeah, I'd love to actually get these into the studio and put them to work. They look incredible. Uh, they will be selling these and they will be expensive. I'm thinking two to three thousand dollars. Super expensive headphones. And then over in a hotel near the strip, I also found HTC's setup pretty interesting where they're showing some new announcements to HTC Vive. A lot of you might not know, I've used the Vive headset a lot. We have one in the studio and they announced two pretty important things. One is they now make a Vive Pro, which is this all built into one headset with headphones and the strap over the top, a high resolution display inside, better tracking. Basically, it's a much improved VR experience for those who want the best of the best. You can also still buy the regular original HTC Vive, but then number two, they showed an HTC Vive wireless adapter, which sort of looks like this uh, bug antenna on your head that plugs into the headset. But this is a game changer because it tracks just as well, but now allows you to walk around completely untethered from your computer. Normally you're plugged into your computer and you just kind of have to hope you're not tripping over all the cables when you turn around and things like that. With this, basically you just have to plug into a battery, toss it in your pocket, and it'll last a couple hours with something like this, a small 3000 milliamp hour battery. But obviously you can plug into something a bit bigger if you're gonna be gaming for a longer time. So that was pretty cool. I think people who use the Vive will find that wireless adapter pretty great. You can use the wireless adapter with the old Vive or the new Vive Pro. Also, I'm aware that using their green screen set for that kind of opens people up to mess with the footage, but I guess too late to change that. All right, some other things. Razer also at their booth had this pretty ridiculous looking pair of desktop speakers and a subwoofer. Uh, they look pretty badass. They of course had RGB again at the base because you know, RGB, but I have no idea how good they sound because it's way too noisy on the show floor, but I'll be interested in checking those out. Audio-Technica also brought a lot of new stuff. They had like 10 new pairs of headphones in their booth, some gaming headsets, some open back, some of these wireless noise canceling headphones that look like they're aiming to rival the Bose QuietComfort series. And then they also let me try out their top of the line 
ADX 5000s, so $2,000 open bag headphones. And don't get me wrong, they sound great, but they're open back, so I'm on the show floor where it's super noisy, so there's, there's no way I can fully appreciate them quite yet. But pretty much all of these are going on sale soon if they haven't started already. There's also tons and tons of drones at CES. One weird one I didn't expect was in a Yamaha booth. It was massive, it looked about the size of like three people put together. Uh, I know about zero other information about this drone other than it looked really cool, it looked like it could go about 200 miles an hour, but that's just me looking at it. But what was really cool in their booth is this, which is a self-balancing motorcycle, which didn't really impress me at first when I first saw it, until I realized those side wheels aren't touching the ground. This bike is completely standing on its own on two wheels, and that guy is pushing it around and it's just kind of responding by shifting its weight and staying upright. That was a pretty cool demo. But speaking of those drones, DJI's booth also had some pretty cool stuff, as they usually do, including their Osmo Mobile 2. Uh, it's a much cheaper stabilization than the original Osmo, something like 50, 60, 70 bucks cheaper than the original. Super lightweight, but it still does pretty much all the same stuff. Smartphone control, a nice handle, a grip for video or a remote start stop. I can see a lot of people picking this up, and this is, of course, also actually going on sale. But so far, in the first day I've been here, that is what I've seen that looks pretty cool. But literally as I'm uploading this, I'm probably literally going back to the show floor to check out some more stuff. So if you see cool stuff that you think is worth showing on video or checking out or exploring, hit me up on Twitter, send me the link. If you're on the subreddit, send it there too. I'm checking that now. And that's pretty much it. See you guys back out in Vegas. Thanks for watching. Catch you in part two. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.